ready. Peacekeeper and, uh, <laughs> and small ICBM and so on. And I, I just can't tell you how much we appreciate your leadership, sir. Well, listen, I thank you for all you've done. I wish you well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. This is Emily, Emily. And, they, and they wanted to give you a present today, a little Irish soda bread. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. I came from the three kids, yeah. and it was his idea this morning. He decided that uh, he wanted to give you a present. Well, but now, you can get a horse in your office over there. No, but I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we can't. And uh, you know, I miss everybody around here, but, uh, but it was time to go. Well, it was time to go. Well, I wish you well, and I thank you and appreciate it. Thank you. Know, as you know, we go back way back oh, long before this. To well, that first trip to Mexico yes. when you were just that's right. the president yeah. that's right. Not even then. I think it's just, uh, you weren't even a nominee then. You were on your way to Detroit. Yeah. It was June of uh, 1980. I think it's the last time he's been on horse, too. <laughs> yeah, pretty close. Uh, pretty close. Yeah, well, we heard you went to uh, uh, Ireland's own today. Uh, yes. Yeah, snuck right. out, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, when I went to Jack Kilpatrick over there. Oh, is there? We had quite a time. Last what? time we were there was uh, on our anniversary in June. Yeah, it was a while ago. I kept asking what you were going to do special then, and they kept telling me nothing, but I didn't want to believe it. <laughs> Listen, I think about you want to get in the middle. Okay. Okay, great. And the children ought to get here in front of us. Okay. And Mingo, you want to come here? Come here, son. Hi. Turn around. Turn around. We have a picture here. Can you have a smile? Can you give him a smile, Mingo? Okay. 
<laughs> this anytime we go for a fa family picture, maybe two out of three, we get a good one. Yeah, yeah two out of three is good. Okay. That's great. Mr. President, thank you so much. Thank we know you're busy. Really this is a really special well, primary for the family. Wish you well. Thank you, sir. And thank you very much. Thank you. If you would, please, uh, our best to the First Lady. I sure will. Okay. Thank you, please. Thank you again. Say goodbye, Neil. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Hey. We already got him some jelly beans. He's pointing at your candies there. <laughs> so, you like licorice? You could, I don't know. I do. <laughs> oh, I do. Uh -huh. Help yourself. Get caught in the braces. <laughs> Get caught in the braces. Well, they're making well. out. Yeah. What do you say? Thank, thank you. you very much. Well, thank you, President. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Dancer. Very nice to meet you. you. Well, I'm sure we'll run into each other again. Oh, yes. We always seem to. Right, sir. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. You're welcome. We miss you. Thank you. And we'll see each other again. Thank you. You're going to keep it. I was going to say. Uh, what is that Irish bread? It's Irish soda bread. Soda. I said. Yeah, but the Secret Service gave it to you. That's what I was going to say. Oh. <laughs> Even the daughter of the Secret Service now. How are they going to decide that this is dangerous? First, man, it just gives me something that is edible. But what happens to those who love the Secret Service? Well, see, my wife baked it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it, it's uh, part of the uh, random purchase philosophy. Uh, <laughs> no one knows uh, the recipient of it. You just walk into a bakery and buy something, and, you know, which is very similar to how other things are purchased for the mansion. <laughs> I take it you've had it before? Huh? I can't recall what I think. Irish bread. Irish soda bread. Mm. It, it's uh, really quite good. All right. And it's safe. <laughs> there you have it. All right. First time I've ever heard him say that about anything else. <laughs> okay. Well, I think maybe I ought to stick in here someplace right. and get a, we'll get a formal group call oh, here with everyone. Group job and I hope it's satisfactory. Well, I'm sure it is, believe me. I think you'd be interested to know that uh, just in recent weeks we've had a few heads of state in here, uh, one at a time, and talked about their own problems. And believe it or not, every one of them is turning to privatization and had a, an enthusiastic report to make as how much this has improved their economy as they've started yeah. along that path. That's exciting. Yeah. It's, it works. Yes. Yes, it does. Your cut, squeeze, and trim. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> President, Nate is going to be great for our briefing the press on his results in just a few minutes. Do uh, you want to give the press a uh, oh. presentation, give the highlights? Yes, may I just uh, make a formal presentation? Is yes. What do with this today? Mr. President, I'm pleased to present our final report here of your commission. It is a combination of six months of effort begun in Santa Barbara, California, with your executive order, Vice President. In our examination, we did find that for over 40 years, the ever-expanding government bureaucracy has been inhibiting creativity and productivity. Of course, it's caused too many government agencies to fail our people, as you've enunciated a number of times, in housing for the poor, in public school education, 
in prisoner rehabilitation and medical care for the elderly. Agencies responsible for these and other services have become muscle bound to the point of paralysis when it comes to considering more effective performance. At the same time, as you know, other government agencies are reaching out beyond the realm of governments, involving themselves in business and business. We think they should be turned back. Our uh, free enterprise democratic society can't really seem to survive and thrive with the shift in the uh, We make uh, in that document 78 recommendations, but they boil down to uh, three basic principles. One is that government should reach out, open its operations, and invite in business by contracting out many of these activities that the government's performing. Another, we feel that the consumer the citizens should have the right to make some choices with these vouchers, housing vouchers, education vouchers. And then the third principle is that uh, we uh, clearly should not be in the business of business. Get rid of things like this $250 billion loan portfolio. Yes. Get, get those resources in and use them for other purposes where they belong. Hopefully, a, a combination of all of that would seem to me that it could spell out a, public policy agenda, national public policy, and um, perhaps effectively be able to convince Congress that this is the way of the future. With that, we uh, respectfully urge you to adopt you. Well, listen, I'm sure I will. I'm looking forward to, to going through this. When you mentioned housing, I remember being in Singapore, and a man I admire was a great statesman, Lee Kuan Yew. Uh, we were going by and showing me some of the public housing, and it just, you know, the lawns mold and everything so careful. And uh, he told me what their policy was. Uh, they admitted that they might have to build it and so forth and put it up, but they didn't want to be a landlord. So they did everything they could to sell the units to the people there that were in them. And they would even, he would even let them use their social security as uh, <clears throat> the basis for borrowing, mortgaging were making payments on these, and they set the price at what they figured the person could pay. And uh, it was just amazing. The government was In there. England, the Thatcher government, when they privatized housing, all of those people who bought the public housing yeah. voted for Thatcher. Yes. We found yes. that out. Yeah. Political change. Yeah. So I noticed in just a little briefing on our meeting today that this was one of the subjects that you have you've dealt with. And incidentally, several commissioners did go to England, spent three days with the Thatcher government and with the opposition. And uh, we were inspired by what we saw, as well as came away with some well, steps listen, to take for, for ourselves. I thank you all for what you're doing, and I think this is going to be one of the greatest contributions that's been made. Well, thank you very much. We would hope so. All right. You're back in my mashed potato circuit days out there. <laughs> when I was a politician, I used to talk about the telephone system and how many other countries in the world uh, just thought it had to be governed. But ours was private. And most travelers around the world come back with the story that the telephoning is horrible in <laughs> every place but here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the well, Japanese just better. sold their phone system. Well, oh, they did? Nippon Telephone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're following your example. Yes, <laughs> certainly are. Well, you're setting the example with. All of this, and, and I thank you all very much. All right. Excuse me. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Enjoy serving on this commission. Yeah. Bless you all. Thank you. Take care. Why don't you do another meeting? Uh, we have free elections in six March sends his greetings. Oh, please. Give me mine. Hi, Pam Taylor from Kentucky. Thank you for having us. Well, I'm pleased to have you. Hi, I'm Bessie Davies. I'm from Virginia. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mr. President. Love you. Thank you. Elaine Brooklyn, Pennsylvania. How are you? Just fine. Thank you. Hi, Libby Wright from Massachusetts. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. 
You'll be back there soon. Yes, I will. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Mr. Beswick, yeah. Nice to see you. Thank you. Mr. President, John Mulder, Mr. County, Pennsylvania. Good to see you. Thank you. Mr. President, Eric Jurgens, Southern City, Utah. Nice to see you. Well, it's great to be here. Good to see you. Thank you very much. As always. <laughs> Exception. They've had both houses of the government. That's right. We would turn that Only one Republican <laughs> president, back since 19, the 1930s, has had a Republican Congress, and that was only for two years. In fact, Truman had a Republican Congress for only two years. But every Democratic president, other than that, they had a Democratic Congress. And I can tell you the difference here that from the first six years, and I'm the only one who had that one house at least for six years. And now that they've got both again, it's just unbelievable. It's just no more bipartisanship. We just don't care. Our chairman. <laughs> Good Good morning, Mr. President. How are you doing, sir? Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Honored to be here. I, I'm sorry I'm so late. We had uh, Senator Boschwitz was giving us some good words and wisdom for this coming 88 election and took a long time doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we better do another group photo here. Yeah. With the award. Would you like the award back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Richard's okay. going to run for Congress, so we're going to get one more seat in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> we're working. Thank you all very much. I tell you, you just confirm something that I've always said. Can I have and that is, uh, every time we start the day and hear the morning meeting in the House of Congress, we're going to get one more seat in Tennessee. Can I have one more seat in Tennessee? For the rest of the day, it never fails. It never fails. But at least they aren't voting. While they're here. You know, waving and routine that we did last year, but unfortunately, I understand you're going to be here this weekend. Uh, we, preclusive. 